Welcome to Rubber Band Live, the Australian recruitment and talent acquisition vodcast and podcast. I am Eden Haddock, your host and the creator of Rubber Band, the recruitment network for all. Let's go live. And we are live. Welcome to today's episode of Rubber Band Live, Career Pathways from Internal to Agency, where I am joined by an expert panel, Rebecca de Blasi and Sarah Blanchard. Unfortunately, Taj Pritchard had um, some computer failures today and she's absolutely devastated. She can't be here today, but um, please do reach out to Taj um, if, if you would love to hear about her story as well, and we'll try to bring her on to a different episode. Now, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I live and work on, the Wadawarring and Jar Jar Warring people. I recognise their continuing connection to the land and waterways. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and I would like to extend this to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Now, I just apologised for Taj's... Yay. Uh, computer failures, but she's managed to get in. So, look, welcome everyone out there. We do have a full panel today. We have Rebecca, Sarah, and Taj. Uh, don't you just love it when technology lets you down, but then it comes and saves you. So, welcome, Rebecca, Taj, and Sarah. Hello, Thanks, thank Eden. you. Thanks, Eden. Thanks for having us. So lovely to see you today. So, look, what, what where I'd like to begin, I think this is a really interesting discussion in terms of career pathways, but let's let's start by introducing each of you. Um, I might go around the room and if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, a quick summary, who you are and a little bit about your career. So, Rebecca, I'll start with you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks, Eden. So I've been working in recruitment, HR, talent for about 15 years now. Um, and that's been mainly internal um, and for a range of different organisations across sort of financial services, state government and technology. Um, and I actually began my recruitment career in agency for a short time as well. Um, and I've had a bit of experience in executive search, but mainly it's been sort of internal along the way. Um, uh -huh. And for the last two years, I've also been working as a career practitioner. So I sort of made a bit of a pivot after the birth of my second child and um, studied careers education. So I've been doing some career coaching work as well. Oh, fantastic. Oh, thank you so much for joining us today, Rebecca. I can't wait to hear more about your career journey. Now, Taj, welcome. How are you doing? Hopefully you're all composed after your um, yes. technology. <laughs> the anxiety is gone. Um, and it's like quite ironic because my granddad works in IT and I always seem to have technology issues. So I didn't catch that gene. Um, so I started off working as a candidate manager or a sourcer in accounting um, for accounting recruitment. And then uh, the big C word of COVID came around and hit us all and was made redundant. And okay. I came over to Mining Employment Services, which is a mining recruitment agency, really looking at that niche work. Um, and then I did what I thought was everyone's career pathway of working in agency recruitment, made that jump over to internal. Um, and I was there for about 12 months and then just recently decided to come back to agency, um, miss that that buzz and that vibe um, and just the, the nicheness of it all. So it's been interesting. Mm. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait to hear more about it. It's, uh, you know, I do agree. Traditionally, you went from agency to internal and you stayed in internal and we're seeing more and more people like yourselves transitioning and having more fluid pathways between the bo between both. So it's a really interesting discussion to be having. Sarah, how about yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself, a quick summary and, and a bit about your career. Yeah, thanks, Eden. Um, so I've been in the talent kind of industry for oh, probably 20 odd, 20 odd years. I've been on both wow. agency and internal side as well. And um, I'm currently head of talent advisory at uh, Talent Solutions. And so my team predominantly focus on um, developing outsourced solutions for our clients, um, both within kind of implementation, continuous improvement and uh um, uh, and um, consulting consulting services as well. Oh, fantastic! And and talent. Uh, you mean Talent International, the the uh, large recruitment agency? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so talent kind of has you know four 
um, distinct business streams. We have our agency side, we have our outsource solutions side, we have our IT project development business called AVEC, and we also have then um, our not-for-profit business, which is Talent Rise, which some of you might be familiar with. Well, Talent Rise does amazing work. And a yeah. big to Talent International and Talent Rise as well, who are very big supporters of the rubber band community. So very excited to have um, someone representing talent with us today. So thank, okay. thank you, Sarah. Now, I always ask this question, and it's always fascinating because I love uh, hearing about how people moved into recruitment. So, Rebecca, tell me about your first job in recruitment. What, what was your first job in recruitment and why? Why did you choose this industry? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually started um, my career in a totally different career. So I was working as a dispensing optician um, oh, and I was managing OPSM branches in New Zealand. Um, and then I fell into recruitment as many people as we all do <laughs> um, and it it came from honestly it came from a conversation after a few wines at a party when I sort of mentioned some of the work that I'd done um, around sort of people management uh, at OPSM and I ended up um, getting a, a HR recruitment generalist role for uh, an investment firm in the UK. So that was my first kind of exposure to recruitment, hiring sort of accountants and analysts. Okay. Um, and, and then actually when I ended up uh, coming to Melbourne, it was interesting because my HR experience was really dismissed at the time. Right. So I actually went to a lot of different agencies and, and because I had UK HR experience rather than Australian at the time, this is sort of 10 years ago, um, it really just nobody was interested. But the so I ended up um, getting a recruitment role in agency. So that was my first um, recruitment role in Australia. Yeah. Oh, wow. Fantastic. And do you know something? You are the second um, optician that I have met this week that has moved into recruitment. I had a uh, recruitment chinwag with Chris Gillard and he was spec savers. But yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, so I have a listen. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing to hear. Taz, tell me about your first job in recruitment. Tell me about your background, why you decided to, to move into this crazy world of recruitment. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I, look, I did um, half a degree in psychology um, and I felt pregnant very, very young and I thought I need to make money to support family. And yeah. when I had a look, I could actually make the same money as being a psychologist as I could in recruitment with less damage, um, so to speak. So um, I went around at a fundraiser that I was participating in and spoke to all of the recruitment agencies there and said, look, I'm keen to get into recruitment. I love networking. Um, I want to make money for the business. And hey, presto, I, I kind of got a job. It was like it was a chance, a lot of drunk wines, um, that's for sure. And we, you know, here we are today. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Great to hear. And Sarah, tell me about how, how did you choose this career pathway? How did you what was your first job in recruitment? Yeah, well, I don't know whether choose is a is is the right word, <laughs> but it, similarly to, to Rebecca, I kind of fell into um recruitment back in sort of the end of, of um 99. I came over to Australia in uh, in 99, just before the millennium, and a friend of mine said, Hey, there's you know positions uh within a, an agency at the time. So my first role was in IT recruitment, um, right. IT recruitment. And, you know, it was one of those kind of work hard, play hard type of environments. But I loved it. You know, I loved the um, I loved the buzz that came along with it, the camaraderie that came along with it. And, and, you know, people didn't sort of necessarily take themselves too seriously. It was a really supportive environment. Um, and, yeah, I stayed in in agency world for probably about two or three years in IT recruitment and then I moved more so into more of a generalist agency role um, which just allowed me to kind of broaden my you know network within the Sydney market and also understand um, various different verticals just outside IT as well um, mm. and I'm still friendly with some of the people that I worked with in that IT role um, later on in my career, I was also able then to use some of those people who got on to start their own agency business when I went internally as well. So I feel like you're, you know, there's less than a couple of degrees of separation all the time in the recruitment market in Sydney. 
Oh, absolutely. And look, I think that's everywhere. It's it's the bonds that you make along the way. I think yeah. it's an industry where you do make lifelong friends very, very easily yeah. because just because of the environment. I mean, it's a people-centric environment. Um, the camaraderie you talk about, I think, Carl, you talked about that, Taj, as well. Uh, and, and you build those bonds. I'm the same. Like my, all of my network are people that I've, you know, really worked with in the past or people I've met through them. It's, it, it's a great community, the Australian yeah. recruitment community. So let's talk about those kind of transitions that you've all had between agency and internal and what, what motivated you to move into those roles. So I'll start with you, Rebecca. Um, you know, you've had transitions between both agency and internal. T tell me a little bit about what made you decide to have those, those changes between the two. Yeah, absolutely. And probably what I didn't mention earlier is that I've just started a role back in agency. So I'm three... Yeah. Three weeks in, I think, now. Um, and so I'm working with DFP Recruitment, um, and they're a, a national agency uh, with quite a large footprint in, in government. And um, my role is sort of a little bit different to any work that I've done before. So it's, it's a relationship and diversity partner role. Uh, and the role is really focused on creating partnerships and programs that help people from diverse backgrounds um, to have more pathways into roles with our clients. So it's completely, you know, something new and different to anything I've done before. But, yeah, I guess, you know, honestly, I, my uh, agency role when I first moved here to Melbourne was out of desperation. It was... <laughs> Honestly, the, the only role that I could um, source at the time, I didn't really think about agency versus internal. It wasn't sort of something that, that I thought about. Um, and it's funny, you know, you're mentioning about those lifelong bonds that I'm still super close to the person I sat next to uh, in that job, you know, 13 years ago when I yeah. first arrived here. Um, and it was really where I sort of cut my teeth and, you know, learned some of those really core basic principles around, you know, relationships and candidate care and, you know, transferability of skills and all, all those sorts of things. Um, but honestly, I, I kind of, you know, thought that traditional pathway was, in, you know, agency to internal. And so I did the same, you know, after... I think it was 18 months, maybe two years, I ended up taking an internal role. And then I just sort of stayed in internal. And I don't think I really questioned that at the time. It was just sort of a, a natural pathway that seemed to exist. Mm. Um, and then I stayed in internal. And it wasn't until sort of recently that I um, went back into agency, although I did a little bit of executive search along the way. But again, I honestly don't think it was something that was on my mind when I was looking at jobs or considering jobs, um, although I think there are a lot of misconceptions that exist around mm. you know, agency recruitment and internal recruitment. But I think certainly, you know, it was really, for me, about the curiosity into sort of particularly the role that I'm in, what that meant. Um, and it was also the commitment from this particular agency around those um, programs supporting people from diverse backgrounds that was the appealing thing. So it was, yeah, less about agency versus internal and more about kind of the team and the role and, and the organisation. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really interesting. I mean, you moved into internal around a... It, it sounds like a very similar time to me and I remember it being really hard to move from agency to internal... And, you know, you would apply for roles and they would say, must have internal experience, or I'd try and register with the HR agencies. And it was, oh, no, we're specialist. You need internal experience to be an internal mm -hmm. recruiter. Did you find that was your experience as well back in the day when you wanted to make that first transition from agency to internal? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it was the same kind of thing that I experienced around my HR experience being very UK based, that that just wasn't... Yeah wasn't even considered by mm. Australian organisations at the time. Um, I do remember applying for a lot of roles, um, yes. but I think I was also working on a lot of contract-based work um, with government clients in the previous agency, so I was sort of able to talk to that recruitment process being less business development or 360 and more focused on that kind of sourcing, screening, interviewing process. So that helped. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah, I do remember applying for a lot of roles at the time. 
Yeah, it's it's really interesting. Thank, thanks so much, Rebecca. Thanks for, for sharing your journey. Uh, tell me, Taj, in terms of your uh, transitions between internal and agency, and, and you've had a couple there you mentioned earlier, do you, would you be able to sort of walk us through those and what the experience has been like for you? Yeah, so I felt that accounting recruitment wasn't for me. Um, I mean, I can talk to a brick wall. And when I jumped into mining, I was like, these are my people. This is where I'm supposed to be. And I was there for about 12 months, went up to senior recruiter. And then I had my daughter and I thought, you know what, maybe it's time to go into internal and just do what everyone else is doing, doing what, you know, everyone seems to be doing and following mm -hmm. in that pathway, potentially go into HR. Um, I was very fortunate. I think in the time that I was applying, um, let, uh, probably this time last year, it was a hard market for recruiters. Yes. Um, so it was kind of like if they were interested, if they had certain experience with similar roles, you know, you were hired. So um, I transitioned into internal this time last year. It was great. Um, really, really fun to begin with. I'm someone that thrives off of being in a high pressure position, very fast paced, lots of movement. And it was like that for the, probably the first six months. And then within the last six months, it really tended uh, started to die down. Um, there wasn't a lot of roles that was happening. I think I had zero blue collar roles and maybe two white collar roles. And that's where my love with dealing with candidates, dealing with clients on site, dealing with hiring managers and going out there having those conversations. Um, that was my favourite part. That was what filled my cup up. So I wasn't able to do that. So I thought, you know, I was able to do that with agency. Maybe, yeah. you know, internal is not for me. Maybe a different type of internal potentially where it is very fast paced and, and lots of roles. Um, so, yeah, that's why I came back to where it all started. Amazing. And, and it's really interesting because, the, I mean, the market was... And, and, and it shifted dramatically. I mean, it was pretty crazy 12 to 18 months ago where there were so many internal opportunities out there and it was very challenging to find internal recruiters. But mm. the market is the complete opposite now. So, so many people within the rubber band community are, are, are seeking internal roles and they're really struggling to find them. And having that conversation to say, what is it, and the way you described it, that fills up your cup, that conversation really around, you know, helping people, having a fast paced environment, uh, working on multiple roles. I mean, we all love being busy in our industry. It's it's trying to shift that mindset to say, Do you know what, moving into agency isn't moving backwards. It's actually, to your point, filling up my cup and doing the things that I love. So it's exciting to hear that you've you've had that journey. And I hope it does encourage other people that you know, might be afraid to move to agency because they see it as a backward step because it certainly yeah. isn't. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when I was discussing it with my previous team lead um, who was in agency, she said, you know, don't don't go backwards. You know, if you if you go back to agency, you're, you're stepping back and you're, you're not going to, you're going to stunt your career. And I thought, how? It's, it's not about this ladder climbing. It's about, a, it's about what you love doing. Um, exactly. And that was talking to, to clients and candidates. So, hundred percent. I, I love hearing that. I think I think you know anyone out there that's listening that that is an internal. It is not moving backwards at all. So tell me, Sarah. Um, you know you've you've had an amazing career. Tell me about those transitions that you've had between internal and uh, agency. What motivated you to make those transitions and, you know, tell us about, you know, what's what's motivated you to move into this role with Talent International? Yeah, well, I think, you know, when when I was looking back around the couple of transitions that I've made over my career, I'd spent a few years in agency and recognised that I really wanted to get a better understanding of working with a kind of sing, singular client um, mm. And so I actually moved from my initial agency role into an RPO role um, on site within banking and finance and I spent a couple of years there. And that was a really good insight into what was a highly kind of structured environment. It also gave me a really good exposure to, you know, the workings of an RPO account, um, you know, going from an agency, which, you know, often is perhaps 
less structured into an RPO type role where everything is, you know, measured and reported on and particularly in banking and finance, that was a really great learning opportunity for me. Um, mm. And then I, I made a transition then into the internal environment, kind of went further into banking and finance. So every time I've made a transition, I've kind of tried to question myself and say, what's the learning opportunity that I'm looking to acquire from my next move? And that was better really understanding um, both banking and finance um, in, a, in a broad sense, but also then having the opportunity to uh, to lead teams within um, a talent acquisition kind of function. And I spent probably the next eight or nine years within internal environments in banking and finance. And, you know, I think about that time where I not only had a chance to lead some teams, but I had some great opportunities to get involved in, you know, large scale programs of change. You know, yeah. it was a, a constantly changing environment in a, in, a, in, in a big four bank. So whether it was kind of new tech or, you know, new processes that we were re-engineering, it was a lot of vendor management, a lot of that type of work gave me some really great exposure. Um, and then when I kind of felt like I'd probably had enough of banking and finance, I, I took a kind of sideways move and, and stayed internally, but I moved into healthcare, which was oh, yeah. such a different, um, it was a really, really different environment, you know, going from a kind of um, CBD centric where all of your C-suite were, you know, in that building to what was effectively, a, you know, a decentralized business um, a completely different uh, candidate environment, a completely different understanding of all things talent acquisition. Um, but again, the learning opportunity for me in that role was not only to learn about Australia's healthcare system and some of the challenges that that we face, you know, in in our capital cities, but also regionally. But it was also about sort of better helping that business be significantly more effective in how they, you know, how they attract and, and, and engage people, um, mm. which is still a really big challenge um, for the health profession. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so. Things like yeah. carers in regional environments where, you know, when I started in that role, we were we had managers who were kind of sticking a poster on a pillar in a in a regional town kind of thing to try and find people. So it was a really big shock to the system, um, but a really, really interesting challenge to try and help them solve at the same time. Um, so I spent a couple of years there and um, then, you know, I felt as though I'd had some really great exposure and experience for singular clients. And I wanted to be able to take, I suppose, a lot of the experiences that I had had and work with multiple clients who had yeah. different problems and who mm -hmm. were at different stages of their talent acquisition kind of maturity journey. And so that's really um, what attracted me to this role and obviously the, the, the chance to work with some really great people at, at talent as well. Amazing, amazing. And Monica Carr has um, uh, just popped a, a comment in the in the chat. Uh, thank you so much for this, Monica. I think it describes it really, really well. My, my profile is a mix of agency and a corporate environment. It's not about moving backward. It's about following your passion for resolving hiring managers and candidates' problem areas. Absolutely. At the end of the day, yeah. that's what we're doing, regardless of whether we're internal or agency. Uh, and, and regardless of whether we're working in specialist roles or whether we're actually on the tools recruiting. So, Monica, I think that's absolutely spot on. Thank you so much for the comment. So speaking about, I guess, current roles, um, you know, tell me about the, I, I, I guess, the core specialisations that you're focusing on. Are, are you on the tools or are you working in certain areas? I know, Rebecca, you talked about diversity. Tell me about your current role and, and the focus there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, touching on something that both Sarah and Taj said actually before, I think, you know, part of my kind of journey from internal or agency to internal and agency again has definitely been recognising that, you know, I love working in that kind of small to medium sized business space where you can be a bit more nimble, a bit more agile, you can try new things, you can stand those things up really, really quickly. And I think, you know, agency kind of gives you that opportunity to do, a, to be a bit more creative in the how, 
when you're serving yeah. those clients that maybe are big and you know it's harder for for change to happen and to happen quickly so um you know the, the role that i'm in now is the relationship and diversity partner so um dfp recruitment were the very first organization in australia to um, be assessed as a disability confident recruiter oh, so, okay, great. Yeah, so that's assessed by the Australian Network on Disability, and it's about um, having that process be really accessible and equitable um, to, to people with disability. So it's been a, a focus for the organisation for a long time, and particularly, you know, working with a lot of government clients, um, you know, having people uh, from diverse back backgrounds into different roles at all levels is obviously very important and it's important for all of us and I think we all recognise the, the value of that. Um, but it can be, you know, it, it, the, the role is focused on how do we find uh, people um, from diverse backgrounds and then facilitate those pathways into employment uh, in a way that is you know, really accessible and equitable. So my role is focused on doing that through partnerships. So, you know, recognising yeah. organisations that are already doing really fantastic things in the community and then partnering with them to help facilitate those employment programs or career-based programs and, and lending our expertise to add value and then at the same time sharing those pathways into opportunities with our clients. So that's sort of what the role is focused on um, at DFP. It's very early days for me, <laughs> as I said, sort of three weeks into the role, but the, you know, the organisation is so focused on it and, yeah. you know, it was the most thorough, you know, not that it took ages, but it was just the most thorough and in-depth recruitment process that I've ever, you know, been on that side of the table in. Um, so you could, I really felt the commitment from the organisation and that was, you know, half of what really kind of, convince me that this was something I wanted to do. Well, congratulations, yeah. three weeks in. That is an incredible, <laughs> well, I think that that's a role that so many of us would have jumped on. Like mm. that, that, that's an incredible role and so rewarding. Yeah. And yeah, you know, I, and, and I find this in terms of corporate responsibility with recruitment agencies. I know we spoke about Talent Rise earlier as well. Like I feel that, you know, the cultures of agencies and also what they're doing to give back to the community just seems to be really shining at the moment. Like we're, we're seeing all these amazing initiatives rolling out of the recruitment agencies and we're seeing a lot of amazing sort of culture initiatives as well. You know, really highly engaged teams, lots of, you know, really fun activities that they're doing, lots of development and team bonding and building and all of that kind of stuff we're seeing on LinkedIn where with the internal teams are really struggling at the moment. They're very stretched, very under-resourced. So it's 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 a great a great um, journey that you've had. So I'm really excited and I can't wait to hear more about the, the programs of work that you roll out. It's, it's very exciting, Rebecca. Yeah, definitely. Now, now, Taj, you talked about, you know, being, you know, moving into internal at quietening down um as it has for for a lot of people and you know i guess you missing that buzz and that vibe that you had in agency so tell me about the role that you've gone into now and tell me what you're focused on and you're are you on the tools recruiting are you are you actually filling roles at the moment yes yes yeah. i am so i do a bit of both so on the side i also run a photography business so um oh, Zosman has also thrown me in doing some seo stuff um some marketing um we're really trying to change up i guess the way things are done kind of bringing a little bit of the talent acquisition side of things of looking at the statistics and the, the field times and diversity as well because a lot of big companies and even smaller companies now they are bringing in you know diversity uh, quotas of not only indigenous but also um females so um i'm trying to bring a little bit of that into it as well it feels like a lot i'm also through in my third week um so i can feel a lot of the pressure i've got like a long list of ideas and i'm going how am i going to get all this done so um and also filling roles so at the moment i'm looking at a lot of engineers um underground surveyors really that white collar level um so official title here is um uh, I think it's white collar recruitment manager. Um, so we've got a team of, I believe, four or five here. Um, and yeah, we're working our way through a lot of the mid and small tier gold mining companies in WA. So 
Fabulous. What I love the way you describe there is the variety. You know, you're you're not just, you know, I, I know when I've been in internal roles, uh, if I think back to when I first moved into internal roles, my primary responsibility was just to fill requisitions in internal. Uh, when I moved into smaller roles, I know you talked about, you know, Rebecca moving into smaller organisations, you get more variety and you get that opportunity to to stretch and do projects and do other work. But often in the large corporates, it's very siloed and you're, you're really, your primary responsibility is to fill roles. What I love, Taj, is that you've moved into an agency role. You've got that vibe and you've got that fast pace that you were looking for. You've also got the opportunity to be creative with your photography, uh, to look at SEO. So you're also doing, you know, the marketing side of recruitment, which is really great. But also looking at, um, you know, strengthening the reporting and analytics uh, capabilities that you can provide to your clients. So, you know, you're, you're getting that really vast variety. And I know it can, you know, three weeks in, it might feel quite overwhelming at the moment. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it sounds like you know you're the sort of person that thrives in that environment. So congratulations to you as well. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, exciting. I can't wait to see more of what of, of what you do. Um, You'll see it on LinkedIn. I will. I've, I follow you closely. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah, you um, you're looking after talent solutions. I think you described it, and taking all of that experience that you've gained over the years and being able to assist clients with their strategies. Is, is that is that right? Is that what your role is looking like at the moment? Yeah. So so um, my team and I are within yeah the, the talent solutions business, and effectively we partner with clients who. Um, maybe perhaps don't have any TA functions and we, you know, design and build TA functions in an outsourced um, scenario for them. We might also partner with clients who may have, you know, bits and pieces of a talent acquisition function and we can obviously support by augmenting. Uh, but the area that my team and I are focused on, Eden, is specifically kind of what we term talent uh, advisory. And that's really... Um, focusing not only on kind of the build out of a, of a function, but it might also be continuous improvement. So, you know, clients might have, for example, technology, um, but they may not necessarily be getting the most from it. Um, so, you know, we work with people in terms of optimization of current state, build of a brand new state. Um, but also then there might also be bespoke pieces of work that we do uh, that, you know, might relate to uh, maybe, you know, brand or EVP or, uh, you know, building kind of competency frameworks with organizations or looking at their, you know, their corporate values, for example. So um, we kind of align a lot of the work that my team do to sort of four areas, if you like, of people, process, tech and brand. And as I said earlier, people are at different stages of their kind of TA maturity in relation to their people, their process, their tech and their brand. And yeah. so my role at the moment and the role for my team is 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 varied, to say the least. You know, um, one minute it could be having a look, as I said, at, at, you know, a values workshop with a with a client. Another could be deep in tech implementation and implementing a whole new tech stack for another client um, or it could actually be working with a client to build out a really robust reporting and analytics framework particularly given that you know i think as we experience crunches in the market i think as talent professionals it becomes even more important for us to be able to really leverage good talent analytics and be able to craft a meaningful narrative around those analytics that you know yeah, really yeah. allow us to demonstrate our value that is a fabulous role that is fabulous you're talking my language there sarah that's something that i'd love to do i love it love it love it love it so what, what a great opportunity i mean it's quite often as a talent acquisition leader when you move into you know an, an internal role you you go in there you do that research you look at the data you look at the statistics you talk to the organization to develop a, an EVP, you really focus on the values and you roll out that strategy and you look at optimization. And the being able to do what you're doing for a variety of clients just must be so so satisfying. It must be a really, really exciting and interesting role to have. Yeah, it is. And and as I said, I mean, I think one of the the 
one of the, the things personally for me is that you can often see, feel, and measure the impact that you're actually having on various clients. So, yeah, you know, a lot of the time, if it's, for example, you know, implementing a new tech stack, you can clearly see the impact that that, you know, stack is going to have both on hiring manager experience, candidate experience. You can hopefully track with some really, you know, geeky metrics that I kind of mm -hmm. love. And, um, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the impact to the, the bottom line of the business for, for nearly all of those types of things. And especially, you know, things like brand work, um, you know, whether that's you've got an employer brand and it's just not really crafted in a way that's, you know, meaningful for your audience. Again, you can track the results in relation to that. And that's really satisfying for me. Um, the work yeah. is not for everyone. Uh, you know, I mean, I think it's generally project based work. So, um, you know, you're working within tight time frames, specific deliverables, a lot of, you know, measurements attached to it. But I love being able to kind of go in, do a consulting piece, deliver the piece of work and then hand that over, hopefully to some of our on-site team to be able to optimize down the track. How fabulous. I love it. So tell me, just a quick question for each of you. Why do you think in the past we haven't seen these fluid pathways between internal and agency? And and what, why do you think that it's becoming more prevalent now? Rebecca, do you think, you know, what was it about, you know, like Monica described in her comment earlier, was it considered a backward move in careers? Yeah, and, and, and you, you mentioned you were going to ask this question. So I made a few notes when I was kind of thinking about it. And I think, mm. you know, but especially when I sort of got into recruitment, you know, but especially when I came to Australia 13 years ago, there was a real feeling that if you were going to, you know, agencies were basically hiring people who came over from the UK. Um, and that's kind of what they were looking at, not looking at you, Sarah. Um, that, that, that was kind of, you know, what was done and that those people either then kind of climbed the, the ladder with an agency or then they moved over to internal. That was sort of that, that perception. And, you know, just being really, really honest. And, you know, there was definitely a perception as well. I think that, you know, the roles are very salesy. They were mm -hmm. very commission-based and that you had to be sort of a certain type of person to succeed in that space. And if you didn't have insight into what the other roles within an agency could look like, um, or how what that kind of sales activity could be rather than just a very kind of typical, you know, traditional sales technique as we sort of think about, um, then you, you weren't necessarily attracted to those agency positions. It's certainly my experience. And I think as well, often when I've gone into an internal role, there's been a real mandate around your, we're hiring you to offset agency spend. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the agency is the bad guys and we want you to focus on bringing the, the talent model acquisition model in-house with less dependency on agency. So I think spending a lot of time in internal, I think you are kind of in that um, narrative a little bit. And so I think then there starts to be that that um, gap or, you know, that, that feeling of, or le less cross-pollination between agency and internal. Certainly, I think that's changing, as you said before, but I definitely, from my own experience, that's something that I reflected on. Um, and, you know, I think now, I think it's also just having that understanding that not all agencies are the same, and just in the yeah. same way that not all organisations are the same. And, and I think, you know, your, your personal experiences can influence that too. You know, certainly when I've heard stories from my career coaching clients, for example, that often if they have a negative experience with an agency, they're kind of tarring all agencies with the same brush. Whereas 100%. you have a negative experience with an employer and you're, you're only thinking about that employer. So it's mm. funny that how that perception, you know, can really be influenced by your own personal experience, recruitment experiences as well. Um, so really I think that all kind of plays into it. Yeah, I agree. It is really interesting because you don't you don't tarnish all other internal teams with the same brush, but you tend yeah. to do it with agencies. Isn't that weird? Mm, it's really totally. weird. Yeah. Well, what about yourself, Taj? Why do you think that, you know, we, we haven't in the past seen these kind of fluid pathways between internal and agency? 
I think Rebecca kind of hit it on the nail, to be honest. Um, yes. and, and like you were saying, with a lot of recruitment agencies that you do hear about, it's very party like it's, you know, you knock off at four and you don't come home until four the next morning. Um, oh, and that was one of my experiences with, <laughs> with agency the first time. And I thought, look, I can't be doing this with two young kids. Um, and I found myself an agency that is very family orientated. You know, they are low key. They're not about that party side. Um, it's very much about the client and about that candidate care, which I probably wouldn't have learnt from internal. So I definitely don't think it's, you know, never don't go into internal, give it a whack. I'm always someone that's like, give it a try. If it doesn't work for you, find another agency job. Um, if, if agency is more your, your thing. Um, but I think it's all to do with the knowledge. We, we don't know. It's not advertised that, um, you know, you go back to agency, you look through people's um, LinkedIn profiles who are in talent acquisition. It's agency, agency, internal, internal, internal. Um, yeah. It's something that needs to be spoken about, which is why I jumped on here because I was like, yes, finally someone, there's other people out there that are like me. I'm not making the wrong decision by going back to agency. Um, it's all about that, making making it heard that it's fine to go back backwards into, not backwards, but back into agency. Into, <laughs> absolutely. Backwards, you know, it's all this back stuff. <laughs> I know, right? But you know what? It's really funny. I had a similar experience because I was in a, um, you know, quite a senior role with Flybys <laughs> and, you know, I decided to do some consulting work and I was doing that for, I, I guess, what you would call an agency. And it made it onto short, you know, the shortlist, um, a, a subscriber um, newsletter that goes out. Yes, and it was yeah. Yeah. internal leader moves to agency. So it was newsworthy. It was so unusual. It, it's, <laughs> it's really crazy. I think, um, you know, and you're right. Like some agencies do have that party lifestyle. Some of them can be very salesy, but not all of them are and and they're all different they all have a unique culture uh so i'm glad that you found that uh environment that is that is suited to to you uh you know you talk about you know having a having a young family and you know you don't want to be out until 4 30 a.m i'm in my 40s i don't want to be out to 4 30 a.m but that's not the experience with all agencies right so exactly. yeah exactly so sarah what about yourself why do you think we haven't seen these pathways in the past um, look, I think, you know, going back to a comment that Rebecca made kind of at the start of the conversation, I do think that there's still that sort of a bit of a perception hangover, um, mm. you know, and, and you know, I think until people actually start to have open and proactive conversations, perhaps with agencies, you know, maybe they, that there's a, there's an assumption that, that that's the kind of, culture that that everyone's aspiring to and and I think you know for me talent's a really great example of if I walk on to you know into the office um we've got people at you know various different stages of life both in our traditional sales line of business who are certainly not always out till four o'clock in the morning you know <laughs> all the way through to you know various different roles that are focused on ESG or DNI. so I feel like you know, maybe it's that not every role is always advertised. Maybe we're, you know, making some of those assumptions that have essentially changed quite significantly from, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, yeah, it, it's a really interesting one. Um, but I also think that there's an overlay potentially around the external economic circumstances that we all play in as well. Because let's be real, if you're a really successful, you know, agency recruiter and the market's really buoyant, hey, you're probably making some good money and perhaps you want to stay there, whether you're an early career, you're paying off a mortgage, et cetera. Um, you know, so I think sometimes when there are fluctuations in our economic situation, we start to see people think, oh, the market's taking a downturn, I might move internally. Well, actually, what we're seeing play out at the moment is contractions in internal environments. And people are now starting to think, well, maybe it's time I had a look at what's on offer in um, in an agency. So I just think don't don't let preconceived ideas hamper what could be, as Taj has obviously alluded to, a really, really great learning opportunity. And yeah, I think that preconceived idea of cold calling even oh, comes yeah. into play 
Mm-hmm. And yeah. agencies don't operate like that anymore. I, I have to say when I first started and, you know, I'm, a, I'm an old fella, yeah. but it was very salesy. You know, you needed to be on the phone trying to bring roles in. That was, you know, post GFC. So, yeah. you know, come clients weren't calling roles in and a lot of people had those well-established internal teams and you know you would need to build those partnerships and have those have those meetings and coffees and build the rapport but it's not like that anymore like you you don't need to be hitting the phone and you know trying to um yeah bring in bring in 20 sales calls by the end of your friday you know Exactly. And I don't even think it's a, it's something that is measured as extensively as it was in the past either. I think it's very much more relationship driven and outcome orientated rather than activity. So yeah, yeah. it's I think a that's shift that. to quality, isn't it? It, it is. It really is. Um, absolutely. Uh, tell me, I'm, I'm going to, just going to ask you one more before we go to the final advice for the audience. But I'm, I'm really curious to hear from each of you what has been the highlight of your career and what you're the most proud of. I'll start with you, Rebecca. This is nothing new. It's not going to rock the boat in any way. I honestly, the reason I love kind of being in this space is sort of the same reason that I love the careers work that I do as well, is that the highlight is just helping people to, you know, find fulfilling careers, to get them into a job, to help them have that light bulb moment. So, you know, when I was thinking about this question, there's not one big hairy thing or project or anything that really stands out. It's it's the little kind of wins along the way every time you help someone to get a job. That really is what um, fills my cup, as, as Taj said before, and kind of brings me joy. So I think those little highlights that you get daily, you know, is the reason that I sort of keep keep wanting to be in this industry. Fabulous. What about yourself, Taj? What's been the highlight of your career at, uh, up until now? And, and what are you most proud of? Um, I think it's all the relationships that I've built, um, both internal uh, recruitment and external as well. Um, you know, we still touch base. I think I'm going out for drinks with the the old crew at the end of this month. And it's those relationships that you just continue building. And it's, it's also, they come to you for help as well. It's like, oh, hey, Taj, like, how's my CV looking? You know, why am I getting any traction on it? So not only is there a friendship, but there's also a professional relationship that's built there as well. Um, and I hold those close to my heart. I think that overall is, is my, my highlight. Yeah, fantastic. I agree. I absolutely agree. It's relationships. What what about yourself, Sarah? What's been your uh, career highlight and what are you most proud of? Yeah, I wish I was going to say something completely and utterly different, but I'm not, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm exactly as Rebecca said, like looking back on projects or pieces of work. Yeah, they're exciting at the time, but it's absolutely the relationships that you've built. And I think for me, even now in my current role, I really enjoy you know, pushing people outside of what perhaps they feel is their experience level or comfort zone. And so, you know, I've definitely had the pleasure of of, of leading kind of people in into new roles. Um, you know, whether that's moving from typical TA roles into change manager roles or project manager roles or specialist roles, for example, in, you know, DE&I. Um, when you do run run into people or catch up, whether it be face to face or back on LinkedIn, you know, there's often that moment when you think, oh, remember that time that we, you know, that we started to ease into doing X or doing Y. And 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 I think those are really special. So it's definitely the the personal connections. Um, you know, and hopefully people have felt well kind of supported uh, uh, along the way to make those moves. Fabulous. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And it's really funny, I thought of this myself. And the highlight for me is is really building this rubber band community that is for internal talent acquisition people and agency people. Because I know uh, in the past, you know, and I've spoken at events and my agency friends, and I've got very close friends in agency and internal, couldn't come along to see me because it was only for internal people. And likewise, there would be groups and networking groups that were only for agency people. And I love seeing the rubber band community come together. And I love now seeing these pathways um, 
people like yourselves, Rebecca, Taj and Sarah, that have had these amazing careers within both internal and agency and that we, we are a combined industry and we're becoming that more and more so where we used to be very siloed. And, you know, at times, I know we described this earlier, at, even at loggerheads where we were seen as the enemy of each other. And, and I really want to break that down. And, and I've absolutely loved this conversation. Um, now, so... I would just like to go around the room with some final advice for the audience because we are we are definitely over time now. But um, yeah, Rebecca, what would your final advice be for the audience? Honestly, I think you know when you're kind of considering this industry, something that I'm always you know telling to my career coaching clients is around just to be curious. You know, and whenever we're starting a career exploration process or thinking about what that next step could be. It's really around thinking as broadly as you possibly can without limitations. And I think, you know, for me, when I was think, considering what, what my next step was going to be, it, there, it was, you know, really proactively not ruling out yeah. agency just because I've always been an internal. So, you know, I would definitely say if, if you've never worked an agency before is to have those conversations with people who have, you know, or, reach out to, to agencies or, um, you know, perhaps the agencies that you're working with to have a different type of conversation and just be really curious so that you can hopefully dispel any of those misconceptions that you might or perceptions that you might have. Agreed. Great advice. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, Taj, how about your final advice for the audience? 100% what Rebecca said, be curious, ask people who are working in the industry. I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I called up a few agencies when I was looking originally and said, what is like being in recruitment? How do I get into recruitment? What can I do? Um, and it is being curious. Ask the question. We are not, we're people that love to talk. So call us and talk <laughs> to us. We are more than happy to help you. Um, and, you know, you, you'll never know you might get a, a role with that company that you're speaking with. It happens time and time again. Yeah, agreed. Wonderful advice. Thanks, Taj. And Sarah, final, final advice for the audience. I think I would just say, you know, before even embarking on, you know, getting into agency, do your research, have a look and see what type of, you know, brands sit within a, a, an agency environment. Do a bit of a skills audit also on yourself so that you're really able to understand is the opportunity that might present itself going to maybe fill a skill gap, stretch my own skills. And don't be afraid to just keep leveraging ne your network. Keep asking, keep asking, you know, questions and, 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 you know, make sure that you're equally interviewing the prospective agencies to make sure that they're going to fill your cup, as Taj said. Absolutely. Network, be network, a hashtag network. line. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hashtag. Fill your cup. Absolutely. Fill That's your cup. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely has been. Look, Rebecca, Sarah, and Taj, thank you so much for joining today. This has been a really, really great conversation and a conversation I'd love to continue in, in the rubber band community. So I'm excited to continue watching your journeys. I've, I'm so excited to see how your roles evolve and all the amazing things you do. So thank you so much for taking the time out today to um to, to come along. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Eden. Thanks, Eden. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day ahead. Take care. Bye.